How can you go on a business trip abroad as a jobless person? Aren't you ashamed of yourself coming out with a bare-faced lie like that? It's not a lie. I really am going overseas for work. Right. Then we're divorcing, liar. With that, he left the room. To him, it seems I, who work from home, might as well be unemployed and lazy. I have a steady income and even contribute to the living expenses. And yet, he won't acknowledge that. A few days after I returned from my business trip, I found divorce papers on my desk, already signed. I see. If he can't understand this far, there's no point being a couple, is there? I signed the divorce papers and headed to the state court. My name is Hannah Robinson, 29 years old. My husband's name is Jake, 30 years old. We started dating in college and got married when I was 25. We were more like best friends than lovers and we always spoke our minds. It might be a good thing, but sometimes things take an unexpected turn. For me, it happened when I discussed my dream with him. My dream is to run an online imported goods store. The opportunity came during my part-time job at a boutique when I was a student. Having always liked foreign designs, I was attracted to the charm beyond my part-time job. After graduating from college, I aimed to open my own store and became a full-time employee at my part-time job. Even as a full-time employee, I could not give up my dream. I really want to have my own shop. Surrounded by my favorite foreign goods, I want to deliver them to my customers. My parents and friends gave me warm words like, good luck, and you will surely succeed. Jake will definitely understand my dream and support me. So I tried to bring up the topic subtly to Jake when he returned from work. Hey Jake, you know, I've been talking about opening my own shop for a while, right? About that. Oh, not this again. It's not going to work if you do it on a whim. You should quit. Why would you say that? It's not a whim. It's something I've been thinking about for a long time. Impossible is impossible. Life isn't as sweet as you think it is. There's no need to be so harsh. Why do you always negate everything from the get-go? I raise my voice without thinking, my thoughts cavalierly dismissed. My husband Jake gives me a scornful glance, his voice ice cold. Then tell me, what's your plan if this venture of yours doesn't take off? We, well, I don't expect it to be successful right off the bat. And what about your income until then? The rent and living expenses we're splitting now. You're telling me I have to cover it all, right? No, that's not what I'm thinking at all. I have some savings for the initial investment, and I'll make sure to pay the rent. Oh, really? Then do as you please. But if it doesn't work out and you regret it, it's not my problem. Every time I bring up going independent, Jake always becomes irritable. The reason is simple, because my income would become unstable. The import shop I work at is well situated, and we have a wide customer base, so we get many customers. Thanks to that, my income is fairly high, nearly the same as Jake's, who works as an office worker. In fact, it might be a bit higher. That's why I've been covering meals when we go out and paying a little more for the rent. My decrease in income is something Jake simply cannot tolerate. At first, he says things like, why rush things? And, you should take your time and prepare, in a kind tone. Now, however, he has no qualms about breaking my spirit. Even so, I did not give up on owning my own shop. No matter how much Jake opposed, I prioritized fulfilling my dream. As a result, I overcame his opposition, and at the age of 26, I started an online boutique. In the beginning, as Jake had predicted, it was difficult to get things running smoothly. But over the years, I implemented all sorts of strategies. I utilized the nature of the online shop, outsourcing to well-known e-commerce companies, promoting on social media, and doing all I could. Thanks to these efforts, a year after going independent, I was able to secure a steady income. From there, I expanded the customer base and products range, and now the annual sales have reached $300,000. Because Jake was so against it, I never spoke about the sales. I assumed he wouldn't be interested anyway. 
Of course he never asked. Still, he never fails to remind me about the rent and living expenses. I had always just given him the money he demanded without any fuss and kept any work-related conversation as non-controversial as possible. But then, one day, something happened. I received this message in the DMs of my online shop. I'm a regular customer of your shop. I was wondering, in addition to the international knickknacks, could you also sell furniture? Actually, there had been numerous requests for me to add furniture to my offerings. However, unlike selling knickknacks, selling furniture online can be quite difficult. Furniture tends to be more expensive, and factors such as the material are also important. Even though I had worked in an import shop before, there are risks involved in sourcing furniture sight unseen and selling it. So, I decided to call my old boss at the import shop to discuss the matter. Hello, is this the manager? I have something I want to discuss with you. As soon as the manager, Maggie, recognized it was me, she sounded genuinely excited. Hannah, it's been a while. If there's anything I can do to help, just let me know. Well, I've had some requests to sell furniture in my online shop. Furniture? That sounds like a challenge. So, I was thinking of checking out the actual items before selling them. How did you source your items, Maggie? I see what you're saying. I can definitely help with that. Maggie, who had connections with overseas suppliers from before, offered to contact one of them and arrange for them to provide furniture to my online shop. Thanks to my long-standing relationship with Maggie, the overseas supplier was happy to comply. With Maggie's suggestion, I decided I would travel abroad to source the furniture. However, I couldn't just go abroad without telling my husband. So that night, I broached the subject with him. Jake, about the week after next, would it be okay if I was away for about a week? A week? Why so long? Well, you see, I might have to go abroad for work with Maggie from the shop I used to work at. Huh. Abroad. If you're going to lie, at least make it believable. What? My husband pointed at me, his expression one of mockery. You're going overseas for work. You're practically unemployed. What are you even talking about? What? Well, wait a minute. You know I run an online shop, right? This trip abroad is for sourcing items for the shop. So you think I'll just believe you if you tell a work-related lie? Are you stupid? Your little amateur shop. There's only so far it can go. Think what you want, but right now, our sales are decent and our customers are increasing steadily. This time, it was because of a customer's request. You're too persistent. Anyway, I won't allow you, practically a shut-in, to leave home for a whole week. With a beer in hand, my husband stomped off to the bathroom. A deep sigh unconsciously escaped from my lips. Why can't he try to understand? His reaction is too harsh, just because he doesn't approve of my work. But I can't just go abroad without his permission. I must persuade him at any cost. Although I was hesitant to continue the discussion, I couldn't ignore the issue. The next day, when my husband came back from work, I spoke to him again. Jake, about yesterday's discussion. Look, I'm tired. I don't have time to indulge in your lies. Lies? I'm only speaking the truth. An unemployed person going on a business trip abroad. You're quite good at lying. I'm not lying. I really have to go abroad for work. At that moment, as I grabbed his arm to plead with him, he looked down at me as if to mock me. Oh, really? Then liars get divorced. D divorced What are you saying? You know, I really can't stand liars, especially pointless people like you who are always trying to show off your success. I... I didn't mean... Shut up. You just want to use a lame excuse to go on a vacation abroad. I bet your boss is a man too, right? Divorce. Divorce. I'll make sure to demand property division. Saying this, he stormed out of the room. At that moment, a furious rage swelled up within me, making my veins pop. Who does he think he is? He looks down on me just because I work from home. He only wants to feel superior. Enough is enough. If he wants it that way, then I'll do as I please. From then on, I stopped seeking his permission for my actions and decided to go on my business trip abroad. Two weeks later, as scheduled, I headed overseas with Maggie. 
We went directly to our UK suppliers where we inspected the furniture and accessories that I would sell in my boutique. Taking advantage of being abroad, I spent the last day sightseeing with Maggie and was able to enjoy some fulfilling days. That said, it wasn't all smooth sailing. My phone was filled with a barrage of messages from my husband Jake. You didn't really go overseas, did you? Get back here right now. I'll forgive you if you return today. Time's up. We're getting divorced, you worthless woman. His every message filled me with irritation, but I didn't reply. I knew that any response from me would only escalate the situation. When I return, if he's open to it, we'll talk again. With that decision in my heart, I spent a carefree week abroad. The business trip was over, and I bid farewell to Maggie at the airport and set out on my return journey. Facing Jake was awkward, but I steeled myself and opened the front door. I'm home! The lights in the house were off, and there was no welcome back. As I headed to the living room, laundry was scattered on the floor, and there was no place to step. Used dishes and instant noodle containers were left as they were in the sink. In the midst of this, I glanced at the desk and saw a piece of paper. What is this? It was a filled-out divorce paper. Beside it was written roughly, To the cheating, jobless woman. I'm ending things with you who don't even listen. Fill out the divorce papers immediately. If you want forgiveness, come here at my parents' house. Then I'll reconsider. Just reading the note, I could picture Jake's smug face. He probably thinks that if he wrote this, I'd rush to apologize. Of course I had no such intentions. I signed the divorce papers that had been left for me and headed straight to the state court. With no problems, the divorce was accepted smoothly. Next, I went to the real estate agent and requested to cancel my current apartment lease. Actually, the place I'm living now is the apartment I lived in when I was single. Jake moved in when we started living together because it was spacious enough. We had talked about moving to a bigger place once we have kids, but there's no need for that now. After finishing the lease cancellation, I immediately started packing up. The next day, I sent all my belongings back to my parents' house and scheduled Jake's belongings to be delivered to his parents' house. All the while, he continued to send me messages filled with absurd demands. Stop being stubborn and come apologize now. You have until the end of the week, you hear? And so on. Of course I ignored all of them, and after emptying the apartment, I headed back to my parents' home. A week later, my phone had been ringing non-stop since morning. Even though I ignored it, it just wouldn't stop ringing, so I reluctantly decided to answer. Planning for this call to be the last, I pressed the answer button. Hello? He started shouting at me right off the bat. What the hell do you think you're doing? Taken aback by his loud voice, I instinctively pulled my phone away from my ear. I decided to record the conversation just in case, and then I spoke again. What's the big deal? There's nothing left to talk about. Don't mess with me. Why all of my belongings were delivered to my parents' house? I just got to the apartment, and it's completely empty. Oh, that? Well, I canceled the lease, so I had to get rid of everything, right? What? Cancelled? You? How dare you do something like that on your own? On my own? The apartment was in my name. I can do whatever I want with it, can I? At this point, I had nothing left to lose. To me, his words had no effect at all. As I responded in a provocative tone, Jake showed his irritation. Don't mess around. I don't give a damn about the lease. We were married, remember? I lived in that apartment too. You just went and canceled it on your own. Married? Yes, damn it. Whether you cheated or not, we're still married. Canceling the lease on our apartment without discussing it with your husband. What the hell are you thinking? You think you can just do whatever you want, even though you're unemployed. I'll never forgive you for this. He raged on, showing no consideration for my feelings whatsoever. That rant doesn't even care about me anymore. I decided to let him know the truth. Um, sorry to burst your bubble while you're getting all fired up about not forgiving me, but we're not married anymore, okay? What? What are you talking about? I submitted the divorce papers you left behind. So we're strangers now. Why should I continue renting a place for a stranger? Hold on, you're joking, right? You're basically unemployed. You'd be in trouble without me. What? 
Don't make me laugh. When did I ever say that? Caught off guard, Jake was at a loss for words over the phone. Seizing the opportunity to vent my pent-up frustration, I blurted out, You've really looked down on me all this time. I'm not the unemployed or jobless person you think I am. I didn't cheat on you. I was traveling abroad for work to cater to my clients. If you can't believe that, that's fine. But just so you know, I'll never forgive you. But wait a minute. But your online store, it's not like the sales can just increase that. I've been working my butt off for the past three years. You don't know anything and didn't even try to understand, yet you keep making assumptions. Three years? Just so you know, I've been making many times more than you. You looked down and belittled me. I don't want a marriage like this. You can live a miserable life on your own for all I care. With that, I hung up the phone, deleted his contact, and cut off all means of communication. It seems that he finally came to his senses and realized that many people are using my online store. He even heard about my success through mutual friends and once came to my parents' house, but I no longer have any intention of meeting or talking to him. Jake made the effort to visit my parents' house, but he was turned away at the door by my dad. Apparently, his own parents found out about his behavior towards me and kicked him out. Now, I heard he's renting an apartment near his workplace and just shuffling between home and work alone. As for me, I decided to live with my parents for a while. Thanks to my job, I can work from anywhere, which is a blessing. My parents' house is quite old, so I'm thinking of starting renovations soon. I'm sure my online store will continue to grow. Without having to worry about anyone else, I'm free to travel abroad whenever I need to. I may have a divorce on my record, but I don't regret prioritizing my dreams. I plan to keep working hard and return the favor to the people who have supported me. We don't need you anymore. Get out, you work-from-home freeloader. With my sister's words, even my parents joined in the chorus, Get out. I'm fed up with the family that treats me and my dog as nuisances. If they're going to take that attitude, then I'll do as I please. Thus began my plan for revenge. My name is Kathy, a 33-year-old single woman. I work as a freelance web designer. My job can be done just with a laptop, so I don't work outside. I have a workspace at home, and I work at my own pace. Despite having such a great job, a disruptive presence began to intrude on my pace two years ago. That was my father and mother. One day, while I was working at home, my parents visited me. As soon as they entered the house, they looked around the room and started this conversation. Mom, this house really is big. It seems like we could live here too. That's right. It seems there's even a spare room. Besides, it's a waste for Kathy to live in such a good house by herself. Yeah, let's move in this weekend. Agreed, let's do that. Ignoring my presence, my parents decided everything by themselves. I had no intention of living with them and told them clearly, Wait a minute, I have no intention of living with you guys. What are you saying? My father, his face turning red, yelled at me. This house was taken over by you saying you wanted it from your uncle, trying to make it yours. There's a limit to how low you can go. Take over? I just had a proper conversation with uncle and he gave it to me. Don't make excuses. Anyway, our old house is falling apart. Your mother and I are moving here this weekend. But Actually, this house was given to me by my father's brother, my uncle who doted on me. The title is still under my uncle's name, but he told me I could use it as I like. According to my father, the family home has become quite old and a full-scale renovation is needed if we continue to live there. My mother is a housewife and my father's salary isn't that high, so renovation isn't realistic. So that's why they set their sights on this house that I had inherited from my uncle. I was definitely not thrilled about it, but my parents had already decided to sell their own home and claimed to have no other place to go. I couldn't just leave them hanging, so I reluctantly started living with them. However, the moment they moved in, my parents began throwing sarcastic comments my way. 
Hey, Kathy, you're already over 30, aren't you? Don't you have any plans of getting married? I'm enjoying my work right now. Keep talking like that and you'll never get married. Why don't you learn something from your sister? My sister's married life isn't going that well, is it? Anyway, I'm fine for now. That's when my mother, who had been listening, interrupted. Hey, don't badmouth your sister like that. Unlike you, she's married and she's even working for a company, you know. I might not be married, but I'm doing a decent job too. You're always just messing around on your computer. You're probably making money through some shady means, aren't you? Shady means? I'm making a living doing legitimate work. No need to worry. How dare you talk back to your mother? You really are the complete opposite of your sister. That's how it was. My parents constantly compared me and my sister. Sure, my sister works for a company, but she's just a temp in an office job. I don't look down on temps, but I certainly earn more than she does. I understand that people from my parents' generation don't quite grasp the concept of working from home, but it was still hurtful to be constantly belittled. Then one day, as I was preparing dinner in the place of my ever-idle parents, the doorbell rang unexpectedly. To my surprise, it was my sister Sandy, burdened with a huge amount of luggage. Huh? Sandy, what's going on? Long time no see, Kathy. This is sudden, but I'll be living in this house from today. As I failed to grasp the situation, I blurted out a bewildered, Huh? What a large house. If uncle was going to give it to someone, he should have given it to me. Whoa, hold on. Living here from today, I didn't hear anything about this. Didn't mom and dad tell you? I got divorced, you see. D divorce So, I'll be counting on you from today. Ignoring my shock, Sandy trudged upstairs and promptly took over an empty room. Despite my best efforts to resist, my parents sided with my sister Sandy and I couldn't do anything about it. From that moment, my stress just kept piling up. Sandy had quit her job after her divorce, spending her days talking ill of me with our mother. Hey mom, isn't this dress cute? Oh yes indeed. Sandy, you're so pretty, it will definitely suit you. Do you think so too? It's totally not something Kathy would wear, right? Well, Kathy is a bit plain, you see. That's why she can't get hired anywhere. All she can do is play online at home. Mom, you can't just say the truth like that. By my side, as I was preparing for dinner, they made sure I could hear their conversation. I was dying to retaliate, but doing so would only give them what they wanted. So, no matter what they said, I just continued to live without any reaction. Then, one day, a friend of mine had a litter of four puppies, and I decided to adopt one of them. I named him Muffin. He's a little black chihuahua, has the most adorable round eyes. When he looks at me, he wags his tail as if it might break off. Owning a chihuahua has been a dream of mine since I was a child. Working from home can be lonely, so I thought Muffin could provide some much-needed comfort. From today onwards, you're Muffin, okay? Woof! I didn't particularly consult with my family when I decided to adopt him. After all, this is my house, and I am the one who is going to bear all the expenses for Muffin, so I don't see why they should have any complaints. When I brought Muffin home, as expected, my parents and Sandy started complaining. Hey, we didn't hear anything about you getting a dog. Exactly. Dogs smell, don't they? I hate odors. Kathy, how could you just bring a dog home without consulting us? We didn't approve of this. As they hurled their complaints at me, I flatly told them. Firstly, I didn't pick him up off the street. A friend gave him to me. Also, I'm the one who's going to bear all the expenses for Muffin, so there shouldn't be any issue. What I choose to keep in my house is my business. If you have any complaints, you're free to leave. At first, they complained vehemently, their faces flushed with anger. But within a few hours, they were smitten by Muffin's cuteness and began to fawn over him. 
Aren't you cute? Are you mommy? Are you daddy? Or are you sis? Look over here, sweetheart. Wait a minute. What happened to their anger just a moment ago? Was it all a dream? My whole family was utterly fascinated by Muffin. Since then, they were constantly fussing over Muffin. Thanks to this, their hostility towards me had lessened and I was able to spend relatively calm days. Then, one day, an event occurred that broke this tranquility. While I was out for an errand, I received a call from my sister, Sandy. Hello? Come back home now! What? In response to my sister's sudden shout, I asked, What happened? She vented her anger, shouting back at me. It's not what happened. Muffin did his business on my clothes. What if they smell? Oh, that? Just wash it quickly and it'll be fine. And isn't it your fault for leaving your clothes all over the floor? What? It's my fault. It's your poor training that's to blame. Enough. Muffin is still a puppy, you know. If you take him out for a walk, he won't do his business at home. You said you were excited to walk Muffin today. Did you actually take him? Well, I... I was going to take him later. And it's all because you didn't teach him properly. Pay me for the clothes. As expected, when I got home, my sister was extremely angry. Both my parents had been informed and they were glaring at me, standing with Sandy. Sandy threw the soiled clothes at me and started freaking out again. I'm going to charge you for the cleaning cost, okay? Why should I? It's because you didn't take him for a walk and left your clothes thrown on the floor. Shut up! Don't talk back! It's because you brought this stupid dog home. That's this happened. What are you going to do about it? Stupid dog, you were quite fond of him before. Isn't it harsh to call him a stupid dog just because he had a little accident? It's because you're poor training. Take responsibility. Why can't my family think of anything other than their own convenience? While I was appalled by my selfish sister, my parents chimed in. Hey, Kathy, shouldn't you at least apologize to Sandy first? That's right. All of this happened because of that muffin you brought home. Ugh! Oh, can both of you give it a rest already? Puppies are like babies. Can't you forgive them for making mistakes once in a while? Pathetic. This situation only happened because of this stupid dog. Kathy, you made the right choice by not getting married. If you became a mother, I doubt you'd raise a decent child. What? How dare you say something like that? If you took it for walks properly and kept the house tidy, none of this would have happened. Finally, my sister raised her eyebrow and pointed at me and said, I can't take it anymore. I don't need you or this dumb dog. Get out of this house. What? Didn't you hear me? I said, get out. We don't need a homeworking freeloader here. A homeworking freeloader? How can currently jobless say such a thing? And who do they think is paying for this household expenses? It's me. As I stood bewildered by my sister's outrageous statement, even my parents chimed in. That's right. Kathy, leave this house. Your presence only makes us feel worse. You're a jinx. All three kept repeating, get out in front of me. At that moment, my anger exploded. That's it. I've reached my limit. If this is how it's going to be, just wait. I, who had decided to take revenge on my family, packed my things and left the house with Muffin. In the end, my sister added fuel to the fire. This is all your fault, you know. If you had just listened to me obediently, none of this would have happened. They still don't seem to understand their situation, even though hell awaits them. Well, never mind. You three enjoy yourselves in that house. Suppressing my grinning mouth, I left the house with Muffin. A few days later, as expected, my sister suddenly called. Kathy, help! The house is... What happened to the house? All of a sudden, we were told, leave by the end of this month. Hmm, so? What? So what's the problem? What do you mean, what's the problem? Why do we have to leave? Well, I've decided to sell the house. What? 
At my words, Sandy seemed to freeze. With a trembling voice, she barely managed to get the words out. What? What? What does that mean? You've decided to sell it? You don't have the authority? Well, I do. You see, that house has been mine a month ago. What? Yes, I had officially received the house from my uncle. Of course, the title is in my name. It's no surprise that Sandy was shocked. I hadn't told anyone about this. You're, you're kidding, right? Even if the title was transferred to you by uncle, you can't just sell it so easily. I was worried too, but right after you told me to leave, I consulted with uncle. He said, The house is yours now, Kathy. Do what you want. You should get away from that stupid family as soon as possible. What? No way! Whether they'd been listening to my conversation with Sandy over the phone speaker or not, my parents started to make a fuss. Hey, Kathy, cut it out. We have no other place to live if we leave the house. That's right. It's unthinkable to do this to your own family. If you're a good daughter, show some respect to your parents. Respect? I asked them with a quiet voice. What are you talking about? You've always looked down on me compared to Sandy. Who do you think has been supporting your life for the past few years? You all had nowhere to live, so I reluctantly let you all live with me. With an unusually strong tone, my parents were at a loss for words. Without waiting for a response, I continued. Who treated me and Muffin like nuisances and kicked us out? It was you guys, wasn't it? Trying to be happy by driving out the original resident is shameless. You people belong to hell. At my outburst, my father begged, Please help us. We're sorry. I don't care. Fend for yourselves, you idiots. With that, I hung up the phone with a loud click. Next, I blocked every family member's contact. Seeing me raise my voice, Muffin looked up at me with a worried woof. I held Muffin close. I'm sorry, Muffin, for shouting. It's all right now. I will protect you. I'm really glad that I was able to get Muffin away from that family that treated him so poorly. Later on, it seems my parents and sister were forced to move out of the house at the last minute, despite their desperate clinging. With my father's meager income and my unemployed mother and sister, there's no way they can lead a decent life. According to the rumors, my sister is constantly being nagged by my parents to get a job. Their family relationship seems to be getting worse by the day. Although I have no interest in how they live, there's no doubt that their standard of living has plummeted since I left. This is indeed the case of reaping what you sow. Serves them right. Meanwhile, I'm spending my days in fulfillment with my beloved dog in a new pet-friendly apartment. I can work whenever I want, and no one can complain about it anymore. I can use my earnings solely for myself and my dog. I am extremely happy with my life now. Muffin, let's go to the dog park today. Woof. Muffin seems more lively. Maybe it's because that noisy family is gone. From now on, I want to protect Muffin for the rest of my life and lead a peaceful life.